Hi, I'm Dr. Mohamed Fazal Fazal and you're watching my first video lecture in ECG series. Uh, this one is fundamental in understanding how to interpret ECG and I will try to make it simple and brief. So this is our first ECG. Well, we are not going to interpret it right now, uh, but yeah, we are going to uh, dissect it. And to dissect ECG, uh, we need to have a clear understanding of uh, ECG waves and how ECG waves are formed. This is uh, electrical representation of uh, one complete heart cycle. You may have already seen it on a lot of uh, textbooks on real ECGs. Uh, and you may instantly recognize this is, uh, uh, this is an uh, electrical representation of one complete heart cycle. This is ECG, yeah. Honestly, if you're going to recognize it, half the mystery is solved. But here is the caveat. When I say you can recognize, I don't mean uh, this one completely. I mean this separately, this separately, and this one separately. This one here, uh, you look at it and you say, yeah, this is QRS complex. Because it is, it is, this one is easier to recognize. But the problem is with these two. Since this is a normal uh, ECG, you can definitely recognize this one as P and T. This one is QRS complex. But in complex arrhythmia, in, in, in complete heart block, in 2 to 1 block, in atrial premature complexes, block atrial premature complexes, and so on, it becomes it oftentimes become uh, difficult to recognize, to differentiate P from T, this one from this one. But uh, once we learn how these two waves are formed, what these two waves mean, I'm sure it becomes easier to differentiate between the two. So let's uh, draw conduction system of heart well I'm not uh, good at trying but I will try to make the com concepts easier <laughs> I think this will do the job not that good but I think it, this will do the job <laughs> okay This is fibrous tissue separating the heart chambers, atrioventricular valves. On the right side, we call them uh, tricuspid valves, and on the left side, we call them mitral valves. Let's now draw the conduction system. This is a vessinode, the natural pacemaker of heart. सारा काम ही इसी ने खराब किया वैसे ये ना होता तो इसी जी भी ना होती <laughs> समझना होता समझने का मसला ही ना होता This is Buckman's bundle A lot of you might not have heard about it but uh, it carries impulses from SA node and uh, depolarizes the left ventricle this is AV node. AV node is not a good conductor that's why it delays the conduction. This here PR interval. Normally it's 0.1 second. 0.1 second delay. 0.1 to 2 second is normal range. These are bundle branches. And these are working G fibers. Let's just label them quickly. SA node. Buckmas bundle. 
carries impulses from S A node to left atrium. A V node. Personally, I call it policeman or uh, check post of the conduction system. Why I call it so? Uh, we will learn that later. Left bundle branch. Right bundle branch. And Perkinchy fibers. Perkinchy fibers are the fastest in the conduction system. <sighs> now P wave. Uh, P wave represents the atrial repolarization. Since it represents atria and atria are small, it only takes a small amount of current to depolarize them. Small amount of current and small duration. Small amount of current. Current represents the amplitude. Low amplitude, small amplitude, see, height is small, this represents amplitude. Why? Because only small amount of current is needed to depolarize both atria. And uh, duration on this x-axis also small, why? Because only takes, atria takes only small amount of duration of time to uh, depolarize. That's why uh, the PV is small, sharp, deflection and smaller in duration okay now uh, qrs represents ventricular depolarization uh perkinchy fibers like i said are the fastest in the conduction system and uh, uh, depolarize both the ventricles instantly at in in just 0 0.8 to 0 0.12 second that's why the needle of the ECG machine uh, deflects sharply and comes back sharply because uh, uh, the Purkinje fibers are uh, the fastest conductors. Also, uh, since uh, ventricles have uh, large muscle mass, that's why the amplitude of the QRS is also large. Okay, now T wave, T wave represents. Uh, ventricular repolarization uh, now uh, the difference between uh, ventricular depolarization and deep repolarization is that depolarization happens at the same time uh, as uh, the impulse travels through bundle branches and uh, through uh, Purkinje fibers it depolarizes the different uh, areas of ventricular muscles at the same time but uh, as for uh, uh, ventricular repolarization, it doesn't happen at the same time. It happens in steps. For example, this area may repolarize first, then this area may repolarize, then this area may repolarize. That's why it takes some time to repolarize. So the T wave also takes some time to uh, come into the region. See, it takes, it, it rises slowly, reaches its peak and then comes back slowly. This is the duration of time it takes, is, it takes the ventricles to repolarize. That's why the uh, strip is not that sharp as compared to P wave. That's how we differentiate between the two. Okay. Uh, one more way to differentiate between P and T wave is that since T wave represents ventricles, it always follows QRS. QRS represents depolarization and uh, T wave represents uh, repolarization. Both are uh, different electrical phenomena but representing the same area of the heart. That's why they are always together. T wave following the QRS. P wave is representing the atria. It may change its position. It, 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 it's always the P wave that changes its position. If there are uh, complex ECG waves and we cannot recognize uh, whether it's uh, a P wave or T wave, always remember this one, this point that T wave always follows QRS. So coming back to our ECG, this is P, QRS, T, P. QRS, T, P, Q, 
you are at T and so on. Well, now you may be wondering if it is the difficulty you have been preaching Faisan. Well, look at this one, this T wave. Let me try it with another color. Look at this one and compare it with other T waves. So what's happening here? Like I said, it's always the P that changes its position and uh, second point was T always follows QRS. T is following QRS, T is following QRS, T is following QRS. But compare these T waves with this one. This is different from all the others. Why? Well, because here P is superimposed on T. <clears throat> if I go on to it deeply, I can see that uh, it must be a blocked HL premature bit. Why? Because uh, look at uh, this P2P interval, almost four large squares, and look at this P2P interval, this one and, and this one. It's two large squares. So it must be coming from some. Uh, ectopic fossae and since it's uh, P wave uh, it must be atrial premature beat and uh, uh, since we have a pause here as compared to this small pause we can uh, see with surety that this is blocked there must have been a QRS complex but AV node has blocked it okay there is another ECG now again, P, QRS, T, P, QRS, T, P, QRS, T, so on. But what are these? Let me draw with another color. What are these? These. Again, these are P waves. Most of you might have already realized that uh, there is ST elevation in 2, 3 and AVF. So uh, we are dealing with an inferior MI. And inferior MIs are notorious for uh, bradycardias and uh, uh, heart blocks. So here we are dealing with 2 to 1 block. Okay. This is it. I hope I was able to clear some of your concepts and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. See you in the next lesson.